What's going on, hip-hop fans? Welcome to another edition of Hip Hop Head. My name is Julian Williams. Here are my um, last five albums from my top ten favorite hip-hop albums. Um, I posted, you know, five of them really early this morning, so I'm going to move on to from five to one. My number five album would be Nas, It Was Written. It Was Written was pretty much in a time of hip-hop that, you know, they had kind of this little mafioso appeal. Reasonable, reasonable Doubt just dropped. Um, a year pr prior, there was Only Built for Cuban Links and the original album. And Ready to Die kind of had, you know, little mafioso type themes to it as well. Um, but it was written, carried, you know, that same type of um, atmosphere. And you could tell the direction with this record, and you can kind of, and some of the songs you could feel. You can kind of feel where Nas is coming from, especially if you grew up in the inner city, such as I did. Nas delivered very well on this record, and the subject matter was very versatile. There was a lot of change, changes within the range of what he was making and what he was doing. You know, songs such as Black Girl Lost and The Message, um, Street Dreams, If I Ruled the World. Songs that are very, you know, are very, um, you know, repeatable. You can continue to listen to these songs as time progresses so you know it was written as my number five album my number four album is Jay-Z Reasonable Doubt Jay-Z Reasonable Doubt due to the fact that that you know it was and I talked to McGreezy about this a couple nights ago you know it was an album that came out in the middle of a very good era of hip-hop a lot of people were paying attention to the East Coast versus West Coast rivalry with Tupac versus Biggie and Reasonable Doubt had dropped in the middle of that, and I remember being a kid and watching BT Rap City, and I remember the Dead Presidents video, and I remember at this time Do or Die had just came out as well, like not not too long before. I remember I liked A Z as a kid and Jay Z. You know, I used to kind of get them mixed up, and I remember A Z being in the Dead Presidents video, and also Can't Knock the Hustle was another song I grew up listening to and was very you know, and and I can still listen to a lot of these songs today. And um, can I live? You know, all these songs were were amazing. And and you know, Jay Z coming up with little, you know, phrases that that are very repeatable from other hip hop artists. Other hip hop artists have used some of these phrases. Hell, it even transcended over to rock music with um, when nobody's listening by Linkin Park. When Mike should notice that I hate my rhymes, but hate everyone else's more. You know, it's. That was pretty much, you know, a Jay, that was something that Jay-Z said. Um, songs such as Politics as Usual, um, Brooklyn's Finest, um, Regrets, all these songs were, were just amazing. And his lyrical ability um, shined brightly in this record. So Reasonable Doubt would be my number four. Um, number four out of my um, top ten favorite albums, number three. I'm going to go with De La Soul, De La Soul is Dead. Um, that one... That was an amazing record. Um, it was very alternative. It separ It was, and it was kind of. It was in a different direction from De La Soul's first LP. The first LP, Three Feet and Rising, I believe it was called Thirty Feet and Rising. But you know, the first LP was. It was. It was very good. I liked the first LP, and you know, it was. It was something different. You know, it was kind of a little hippie movement in hip hop. You know, you had all all kinds of different crews and different groups. You had the BDP and you had their crew. You had um, Cold Chillin', you had these guys, and you kind of had the Native Tongues movement, Black Sheep, A Tribe Called Quest, De La Soul. Um, you know, you could even consider the leaders of the New School to be part of this movement as well. But overall, overall, um, this Native Tongues movement was amazing to hip-hop, because it led to other alternative you know, phases of hip-hop, like the Rockets Records in 1998 with Black Star and Talib Kweli, when they released... I mean, most deaf black star with Talib Kweli and most deaf, and you know, led to a kind of a um, general falling for these younger artists who were in the alternative music of alternative part of hip hop. People such as like like, like I said, Black Star, Most Deaf, Talib Kweli, Pharaoh Monch, um, Slum Village. All these guys, you know, were amazing parts of hip hop, especially in the alternative movement. And De La Soul is dead was just an alternative sound. You had a lot of gangster rap coming out at that time, NWA Niggas for Life. You had, you know, a hardcore sound with the Ghetto Boys and 
and also you have raunchiness with Two Live Crew. But De La Soul kind of, it was kind of a breath of fresh air with De La Soul is Dead. How that record was constructed, I think it was like the first five mic album in the source. And that was, and that was a huge deal back in the day. Um, was that, was that album being five mics in the source. Um, but De La Soul is Dead was just amazing. It was a different, it was something different. It was a breath of fresh air. It was just something different. So, my number, like I said, my number, um, number three, De La Soul is Dead. Tupac, Me Against the World is my number two. I choose this one as number two on my favorite hip-hop albums of all time because of the dark. You know, it was Tupac's Darkest Hour. That's kind of how I felt listening to his record. It was Tupac's Darkest Hour. And, you know, it was, a lot of, it was a lot of other stuff that played a role. You know, he's going to jail for something he possibly didn't do. Who knows? Um, you know, he's going to jail. And it made history being the first hip-hop artist, or hell, the first artist to have a number one record when they're in prison. So that's something that was historic about the record. But, you know, that, it's another, that's another record that dealt with different things, different themes, such as, you know, So Many Tears, Dear Mama. Um, I believe Crazy was on this record, Me Against the World, Temptations, all these records were, you know, different, there's a lot of versatility, um, and a lot of great writing, I think that great writing played a huge role in this record, um, the writing was just amazing, um, Tupac, you know, just, just shifted and had, at the time, modern day art with what he wrote, and sometimes, I, from what I've heard, he wrote things in minutes, and he was, he would write and, and uh, rap for minutes, and it all was over. You know, the whole track was over. He would do the track in one or two takes, and it was all done. So I got Tupac, Me Against the World's number two. My favorite hip-hop album of all time, my number one, is going to be Nas Illmatic. Nas Illmatic, you know, he, it was... Nas Illmatic is like hip-hop's thriller. Um, it's probably my way of describing it. He had a lot of songs that were just anthems, songs that stood for different things. Breaking down the tracks, because um, it had like nine nine actual tracks. It was a ten track record. It had nine tracks, released in '94. Um, it was the pi pi excuse me the pinnacle of hip hop um, as fine sour in that moment in the in one of its best you know in one of its best periods from like ninety say ninety two all the way to ninety seven was a was an amazing remarkable time for hip hop then. Nazo Mac a debut album. Um, was a landmark album, and a lot of people like to put, you know, Nas's records, and they try to make compare them to Illmatic, and put them on this different pedestal. But Illmatic is just, you know, that record that, to me, that I could just continuously listen to, over and over again, and feel some of the stuff that he was saying, the grittiness, the poetry. I could feel it all with this specific record. Um, songs such as, you know. You know, when um, he came out with um, New York State of Mind, he had New York State of Mind. It was just, it was amazing how he just rapped and continued rapping over, you know, that piano type beat. And the produce, the production, the producers that wrote, that were on this record, Q-Tip, DJ Premier, LES, um, you know, just the, you know, just to name a few, but, you know, hell, even Large Professor delivered on this record. Songs such as Life's a Bitch, The World Is Yours. Um, halftime, you know, ain't hard to tell. All these songs were amazing. One love, you know, any of these songs that came out could have been, you know, hip hop singles, and the record was still done the same regardless. Um, it was a landmark album. It was very poetic, um, and the stories that he told and the pictures that he painted were amazing. How he how he did it with Illmatic, so. Anyway, my number one album is Illmatic. So anyway, thanks for watching, and that was Hip Hop Head. Peace.